Today we're visiting a town on the eastern escarpment and looking here at an endemic to the area, Nerine platypetala. So this Nerine only occurs around the wetland area in this town. The town is called Wagerstroem and another town really close by Newcastle and uh, we'll sort of visit the area from low-lying wetlands to see this beautiful marine and also going up to the higher elevations to find some terrestrial orchids and so on. And on a very rocky slope, um, I was surprised to find Ceterium longicodum flowering here in a what I would sort of think is quite a disturbed area. But uh, it seems to thrive here and uh, there were a few other plants as well in the spot. And here on the eastern escarpment we also find Erica Serentoides Barbertona. So it actually, it's a mountain range that extends all the way up from the central Drakensberg around Lesotho that most people would know. But uh, the mountain range extends all the way along the eastern side of the country. And this is Clodiolus eclonii. So today we'll see a few specimens as they were out in peak flowering. And here you can see Knopophia porphyrantha, also flowering now here in a wet uh, seepage on a rather steep hillside. And this is uh, Aristea torilosa, also flowering now with the really nice blue, delicate flowers. And uh, this is another Knopophia porphyrantha, at least I think so, because uh, the Knopophia seem quite difficult to key out and ID, but uh, this one definitely had a darker color and uh, inflorescence seemed to be more of a, like a, a spire. Um, in comparison to the other porphyranta that I saw in the same spot. There's a lot to like about Gladiolus eclonii, but I think especially uh, the spotting on the tepals 
that can vary from specimen to specimen that gives them a really unique and beautiful look. And as we venture into the mountains, you can see Brunswickia rodulosa also flowering now in mid to late summer, more so late summer. And here we have Habanaria dives or dives or dives, however you'd like to say that. This is uh, really one of the beautiful terrestrial orchid species in the area. Most of these orchids live in very specific habitats and uh, they, across South Africa, all of the orchid species are protected and uh, collecting of these plants are basically illegal and uh, for good reason, because uh, of the specialization, it's almost impossible or very hard to keep them in cultivation and to propagate them without having a lab and doing a whole lot of extra work. So to the average person wanting to grow an orchid in the house, this is definitely a no-go. And here we have Streptocarpus pentherianus one of the smaller species of uh, Streptocarpus to be found in South Africa. And here you can see Plectranthus fruticosus growing underneath the canopy of a sort of a Afromontane forest um, that's sitting in a, a sort of a gorge uh, next to the mountainside. And also under the canopy is impatient Hochstetteri. Also flowering now, you can see the bugs got to the leaves here. But uh, it's uh, quite a nice and a very orchid looking flower on this plant as well. And then here in a surprisingly wet area between ferns was Gloriosa modesta, also flowering with these orange, bright orange bell-shaped flowers. Here you can see Disa rosia vitata also flowering um, on the hillsides here. This is a super rare species of orchid, only found in very small areas in the eastern side of South Africa.
Here you can see a beautiful stretch of grassland and in the distance there in that sort of uh, gorge where the water runs down you can see the Aframontane forest sitting tucked in in between the grassland. And here you can see Alapidia pedincularis with the really beautiful white little flowers that seem to attract a lot of pollinators. This is Crassula vaginata growing here on a higher section of the mountain where there's a bit of a rocky outcrop and a naturally drier soil. So I'll leave you with that and then uh, the next part of episode 8 uh, will be up next week. Thanks for watching and as always please click the like and subscribe to help the channel grow.